All right, bless God. Let's get into the Word of God. You know, we're so thankful to God for all of our online members, those that are listen live, and uh, the hundreds that listen afterwards. We thank God for you. We appreciate you. Um, the power of this ministry um, is uh, is seen in the lives of people that send in testimonies and talk about what God has done in their life because of this ministry. So we are so thankful to God for that. All right. We want to uh, constantly encourage you with your kingdom offering. Stay on the alert. Allow God to use you at any time to change someone's life. All right. Always be on the alert. Don't allow uh, the devil to get you caught up in so much other things. And, and how does he does that? He make you focus on your problem and all that you have to go through instead of having you focus on uh, what God want to do through you. So you, you're more concerned about your, uh, your, your bills and, and the people that's getting on your nerves and you're not alert to what God want to do through you. So stay alert. Always stay in a position that I want God to use me for his glory. So that, that's always on your mind. Yeah. All right. Whatever money you have set aside for God to use, you need to be always ready to distribute it. I never walk into a restaurant and not scan it to see if there's somebody I'm supposed to be blessing. Never. I never. I don't do it. It's a habit of mine now. When my wife and I go out, I don't care whether, well, I don't matter where we're going, whether it's Chick-fil-A or whether it is Carmine's or any other place we're going, that we're looking to see is there somebody here I'm supposed to be blessing. I want you on that same type of alert. I can't get God to bless you like he's blessing me. I'm not talking about materialism. If I can't get you to do what I'm doing. Right. You, you hear what I'm saying? So I, 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 we, we thank God for you, but keep your kingdom offering ready to be used by God, all right? So, you know, this is the first quarter of the year. We're going to talk about black history. We have some other things we want to, to get involved with. Um, and I really want to just uplift your thinking on where we come from. We got some things we're going to be proving. We ain't going to just be making blank, blank statements out here. We got some things that we're going to be proving, um, you know, so that we can show you where you come from. All right. We're not trying to cause a divide. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to, to, to just educate you to who you are in God. And, and that's, that means your identity means a lot. If your identity didn't mean anything, trust me, they wouldn't put so much effort in taking it away from you. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? All right. I love when I say this around people that can understand. Obama was not the smartest black person in America. He wasn't, he isn't, and he's not going to be. You understand that? Don't ever allow the media to tell you who's who in your, in your, in, in your ethnic group. All right? 42 wasn't the best baseball player. You crazy if you think they were going to bring some, of them, some people from the Negro League. 42 was average. They don't like that because they made a movie about him. So he, this was the best they had. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. All right? 42 was selected because he wasn't the best. They weren't going to bring nobody on that field to show them out. They thought they were bringing somebody on that field that they can show the buffoonery that they've been projecting at their kitchen table. They now wanted to put it on the baseball field. You understand that? 42 wasn't the best. You hear what I'm saying? All right? So you, I want you to understand who you are and what God wants to do through you. Now, this don't mean you hate anybody else. You just need to understand who you are. Amen. All right? We don't have time to complain about what we got to go through to get to where we need to be. Just get there. Right. Right. We're talking about what we had to go through once we're there. But we ain't about to complain on our way. All right? So let's get into this. Let's get into the word of God. I believe God wants to bless you. Amen. And, uh, you know, uh, we, 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 we're talking about cleaning up where you're at. Cleaning up where you at, and um, and you know people people be tapping your phones and stuff. They trying to act like they heard from God. You understand? But um, you know, but 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 I I'm, I you know I'm not gonna lie to you. But God began to tell me if they can't trust me with what they got, I can't give them more. Amen. Now here's the thing: you don't trust him by limiting him to your understanding. When, I'm going to say some things. I want you to get this. I want you to get this. 
When God comes to see if your house clean, he's not going to your living room. He's going in that top drawer. You, 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 I hope you catch that. It's not your living room. It's not the kitchen. It's not where guests go. He's going in your closet. Amen. He's going to see where, what, what, what kind of life you live. He's going to look down at the floor and see how those shoes is organized and see what kind of, what kind of child. See, you, you can't try to be something in the face of people when you're not concerned about who you are in an all-seeing God. What he sees me more than what your company will see. Mark 4 and 23, if you will. Mark 4 and 23. God, if you fix where you're at, you're going to grow. You cannot go to the next level. You will not go to the next level financially. The higher you go financially, the less money becomes important to you. You hear what I'm saying? So it is the will of God for you to grow, but you don't measure how good God is by how much money you got. You just don't work like that. You know what God got me on the campaign on right now? The food, this thing hit me, and I'm telling you, that's why you got to know who, who your friends are. Your friends push you to your destiny. Your friends is not your cheerleader. So y'all, you know, y'all heard me talk about I post, I post, put a picture up. I know the Holy Spirit told me to put this picture up. I went, and you know, I brought me with a cigar, and I post a picture. My sister said something. That thing began to build and, and build momentum. People contacting me about just understanding who they are in God. Then God opened me up to a whole nother level on how much damage the church have done to his children. That he has some of his children that don't go to nobody church, but more like him than people with titles in the house. Hurting people is something that the church have done with boldness. Talking about people, running people down, not minding their business. Yeah. Who the baby daddy is ain't none of your business. Right. It's not your business. Who live where? Who humping who? Who? That's none of your business. See, I'm gonna tell you something. As children of God, we have to use all the information we got to edify, to build. We got. To, listen, we're the true children of God. We are not traditional churchgoers. Right. We don't jump, shout, and fall out and, and raise money and all this stuff. We don't we leave here to act like God, to, to the other people's lives can be better. We got to edify, not destroy. So this is not I, I like being plain so you can keep, you'll know what I'm saying. You can have someone, two men, that's in your company, that's married, and they say God's all right with it. We're not to debate with them. We use wisdom to win them. That's it. Amen. God didn't call you to prove nobody wrong or right. He wants you to love them. God said, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. God, use love and kindness to draw people. Why do you need to use something different? Now you, now you, can, get, you, can, get your, you can get yourself right with God. I'm telling you right now, y'all ain't going to be able to be kissing on each other like that there and thank God going to bless God. He's going to bless that master. That's not why God told you. And church folk have been preaching what they know instead of what they've been told. I said that to a preacher. I said, Doc, you, 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 you'll never be great preaching what you know. You preach what you're told. Amen. I've studied weeks on stuff. And then God said, that's good. I'm glad you spent some time with that. Now, let me tell you what I want you to talk about. Amen. You want me to talk about how you been talking about the roots of this tree and when Jesus spoke, the effects of... No, 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 no. This is what I want you to Just go in there and say this and sit your butt down. Amen. Church folk, listen to me. We're here to build people up. We're not here to destroy nobody. Amen. Don't you ever let the devil use nothing you have about somebody else to bring them down. Amen. Don't you let them do it. We're going to build people up. Church folk have been talking about what you wear, which means nothing to God. I would, I, if I had time, I can, I can break down the nakedness of Jesus. Now, in the movie, they show him with a rag covering himself, but he was naked. He walked the streets up to Golgotha's hill. You have to understand that it's not in our, our attire. Now, I'm about to say something, now, and I hope it slapped the right people. When women wear what they wear, you can't stop them from coming to church. 
you got to stop you from being impacted by what she got on. Now, let me tell you something. Now, now this, is what, this is where we got to show our strength and our wisdom. You understand? Women will come in wearing something that may be not appropriate. We don't throw them out of the church. That's when you use your strength and your wisdom. If you weep, come on now. Don't blame somebody else for your weakness. You know, I was watching the preachers of L.A. Right, this was years ago when he used to come on with Bishop Noah Jones. And Bishop Noah Jones has a female friend that's very attractive and smart. Very smart woman. And uh, they have a close relationship. And I remember another bishop, Bishop Gibbs, whatever his name was, Gibson, he was on the show and he kept saying, you ain't going to tell me y'all ain't sleeping together. You ain't. Now, he was projecting his weakness on another preacher. That's right, that's right, that's right. He can't be friends with an attractive woman and not have sex. <laughs> Listen, we've been preaching from our weakness too long. I'm over here, God. You got, got all that TV showing. But, but, but take, listen to me. Let me tell you something. Listen to me. Don't take your weakness and make a doctrine out of it. Yeah. Yeah. The church ain't what it used to be. You went away wearing yoga pants to church. No, no. It's not the yoga pants. The reason the church is not what it used to be. The church don't have no power like it used to have. The church is ineffective because we don't know how to mind our business. Love people. Come on now. Use wisdom to win them. I got people changing their life and I've never once called them on the carpet. I've got people that come into this ministry and used to smoke, don't smoke. Used to drink to the point that they get drunk. And now they don't. But listen, when people come here to change, it ain't because I'm talking to them. It's not because I'm texting them. There's something living on the inside of them that make them want to change. It got nothing to do with me. It's between them and God. So I need you on board with me that God going to elevate you. But when he elevates you, you're going to elevate in the character of God more than the things of this world. Amen. Amen. The church now have made us believe that depending on what you got in the earth, which will deteriorate, mm -hmm. which is temporal, made us feel like we better than somebody else that don't have. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not talking from a poor man's point of perspective. So I'm not talking, I'm not, I'm not a preacher that's struggling, trying to get people to like me. I'm not. I'm not somebody that's hurting and, and trying to condemn people that got more than me. Well, he's just talking about these preachers because he broke. You're a liar. You're a liar. Listen to me. Listen to me well. If we don't stop this foolishness, God's glory can never come in and dominate the earth like it's supposed to. It starts in your home. You know, I was telling my wife that, you know, we, first off, people got so excited. I thought I mean, we was giving away this, this um, bedroom set, this water bed. We've had this thing since 1994. And, um, you know, solid wood, you know. I mean, we got like the best mattress, the waveless water mattress, all this stuff, trying to give away. Probably because most people can't fit that thing in their bedroom anyway. That's just the truth. And uh, people, so I post something and I said, excuse the mess. We, uh, we pack it. I had three people in Christian church, I mean, Doc, you moving? And I, I didn't respond because I could sense they felt a little glory right, right. that I had to move out of, come on now, my estate, that they like it. No, no, no. <laughs> listen, listen, I didn't respond to them, so I mean, this is where they can talk, and they can start speculating, you understand? Right. Let's get them to chat. No, we moving the honest furniture out so so far, for, what's his name? Versace can move in. <laughs> no, listen to me. Listen to me. The stuff we got means nothing. Means something to people. There's some people looking for you to fail. That, listen to me. I got a family member. You know what? You can do your investigation. They, they got a problem with me because of things I've said years ago about flesh. If you overweight. You can't talk to nobody about getting their flesh under control. You got your flesh out of control. It's seen in your waist size. No, come on. I'm not trying to hurt nobody. But these are the things we overlook. The church have said certain things is all right, certain things are not. If you overweight, your flesh is out of control. So what do you have to say about somebody that's sexually out of control? 
Out of control flesh is out of control flesh. Period. The church told you being overweight, obese was okay. But having sex was not okay. The devil is a liar. Come on now. And all I said was, I didn't say that, I didn't say it wasn't called. I didn't say what all I'm simply saying is that if you overweight, don't try to condemn somebody else that's making babies. That's all I'm saying. You, we all need his grace. You feel what I'm saying? So everything I preach don't mean that I'm I'm 100 in it, but I ain't about to change truth because I'm a little messed up. You understand? So we gonna grow. It's gonna start in your house. It's gonna start in your closet. My wife and I, we was cleaning up, get some stuff. We had to get the the, 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 the our bedroom painted, and uh, and I, I we gave away. I gave away two garbage bags full of clothes. Two garbage bags full of clothes, and I threw away one garbage bag full of clothes, and I still got ton of clothes left. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean, it, you know, y'all know I'm, I'm a clearance man. You know what I mean? When you see me with two, three hundred dollar pair of jeans on, you know I didn't pay that. Right. You can tell anybody, bro, he didn't pay that. No. <laughs> he tried to floss. He didn't pay that. He ain't pay that. Trust me. You know what I mean? You know, and, and, and I'm, I'm putting away all these clothes. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. When I'm taking out all these clothes, it was so disorganized. Because I had my closet in half decent order. I had my dress shirts in color coordination, facing the same way. I got my jeans. I got everything that I thought was that. And then yet God now pushes me to another level of order. And I told my wife, I said, this house is not just to be lived in. It's to glorify God. Amen. It's to glorify God. God wants you to take where you at and make it great. Make it beautiful. And you don't have to have a, a Lamborghini to have a clean car. See, God not looking at the front seat, going to the trunk mm -hmm. to see whether or not you're ready to go to the next level. Amen. Amen. You hear me? Amen. All right. Even how you walk around your house make a difference. It's a proven fact. This is not my opinion. These are facts. That how you stand and look at yourself in the mirror will either raise your confidence or lower your confidence. No matter how you feel, just look in the mirror and just suck that big gut in. Come on now. Yeah. Look at you. Come on now. That's why you self-programmed to be late. Because I got to look good for I leave. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not, that's not. Some of y'all need to just start early. Come on now. That's not a reason to keep being late. But, but if you look in the mirror and you ain't satisfied, you'll change everything. You get ready to walk out the door. You look at yourself and be like, no, that ain't it. Listen to me. We self-program to have strong confidence to, to, to be to look at ourselves as kings and queens. Amen. So when you look at yourself, you got to look at yourself like you know who you are. Amen. You don't look at yourself speculating. And if you don't measure up, God know to change what you got on. Amen. Sometimes you do need to get great. Can't just walk around the house looking like a first class bum. Nobody can you ain't going nowhere. You still need to get yourself right. That's what you get these sweatsuits for. You feel me? You throw on your sweatsuit. You throw on your yoga pants and a, a clean t-shirt. Come on now. All right? You make sure you're right. It doesn't have nothing to do with where you're going. Stop trying to fix yourself for other people to see. Fix yourself because it's part of my identity. It looked like a woodpecker been on you. Let me give me that. Home. I don't even know where that came from. But you can't be having all that polish chipped up on your feet and on your hands and stuff. You, it's about you. Amen. You shouldn't be comfortable with that. Amen. You don't be walking by. Come on, let me get off that. So to grow, growth requires more than more than just desire and hunger. And to grow, you're gonna need more than just hard work. Because if you're working hard but you're not changing in character and in discipline. You're, God can't take you to another level. You have to understand that if I'm going to grow, there are some things I got to do with me. The first thing is, I cannot be affected by outside influence. Wait, wait, you know what I mean by that. I'm not saying you don't learn from people. What I'm saying is, I can't let how other people act change who God made me. You understand that? 
I can't allow, I'm about to say something, you can take whatever you want. You can't allow what your spouse say make you something God never intended. That's right, man. Come on, now, your wife can't say something you're talking about something. I, I, never was, I never was a woman beater. <laughs> well, you know, more in this church probably is probably the reverse. I never beat none of them. Mom. Never beat a man like I beat you. I never but you said something. You don't say that to me no more. You don't call me that. Don't you call me? That woman jump on you now. I'm saying. I tried to tell somebody, but y'all don't listen. She walk up with that with that with that right leg facing this way. And that left leg facing that way, and she walked to you in that posture. Oh yeah, you you need to know something about that. Yeah, yeah, you know it. No, if she just walking at you straight like this, you you got a chance. You can just grab her, hold her down. When that chick start starting. What you say? What you see? No, you need to you need to hurry up and change that conversation quick. Be be very apologetic. That's not a time to prove you anything. All right. You can't allow what pe other people do change what God is doing on the inside of you. You understand what I'm saying? God needs you to be 100 all the time, not easily provoked to be somebody else. Do you hear what I'm saying? God want to be able to send one of his angels, sneak up on you, come on now, and you're still the same. I don't, listen, the reason the church building, you know, people are the best they could ever be right here in the church building. Right now, you know what you're capable of. You can stop smoking, you ain't smoking now. You ain't doing it, you ain't cussing now. Some of y'all. No, no, so there's certain things you know you can do. You're just in the environment that allows you to be free. He has something that rests with you that you conduct yourself in a certain order. No, there's many, many of you know when I come into the house of God, there's just certain things I ain't gonna do. So you know what I mean? Certain I just changed. I'm more conscious. Of what I'm doing, what I'm saying. Right, right. I'm slow to speak. If you know you 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 know got a loose lip, you've been to cut somebody out for you know you know you slow to speak. He said, mm, mm, mm. "All right, cool, all right," because you know what you was about to say. So you got to understand. I got to be the same all the time. Mark four twenty three. If you don't fix where you at, if you don't trust God where you at, if you don't believe God wants you one hundred where you at. You can't go to the next level. Amen. Now, for those that those that those that trust God with their money, there's a lot of people that don't tithe. There's a lot of people that don't tithe. If you don't trust God with your money, don't talk to Him about money. You don't trust Him. Mm -hmm. I, I remember one time I ministered to to a person, and I said he was telling me all his problems, and I said, "Well, the Spirit of the Lord said to me that you're in this position because of bad decision making." He said, no, 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 no. I, he said, I never made no bad decisions. This is witchcraft. I said, it's not witchcraft. The spirit of the Lord said, you made bad He said, no, no, I never made bad decisions. Now, once you, once you tell me the spirit of the Lord told you something that ain't true, I don't want to talk to you no more. That boy, keep, keep coughing. This thing, I need your opinion on something. Why you want my opinion if what I said yesterday right. was a lie? Yeah. Why do you want to hear from me today? Right. You understand what I'm saying? Listen to me. When you get to the place that God is talking to you, God is elevated. You know what's true. Amen. You know what's not. Amen. Don't hate me because I'm telling the truth. Amen. Hate me when I'm trying to gas you up to be something you're not. Mm -hmm. I didn't think you'd get that quiet. Uh -huh. If anyone has ears to hear. Now what does it mean to have ears to hear? You must be born again. If you're not born again, <clears throat> you can't hear from God. The world cannot receive the Spirit of God. The world cannot. When you people say, when you get saved, you receive the Holy Ghost. There's plenty of scriptures to deny that. Remember what Paul said um, to, to John's disciples. He said, have you received the gift of the Holy Ghost since you believe? Mm -hmm. The disciples were believers, but they had to wait on the Holy Ghost. There is a separation between receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit and being born again. You can't be born again without the Holy Spirit. You say, no, no, it's not possible. Tell it to the Bible. That's not my opinion. You can believe what you want to believe. I'm just telling you what's in the Bible. All right? You must be born again to hear from God. That gives you spiritual ears. If you're dead to God, you can't hear God. You understand that? If anyone has ears to hear, if anyone is born again, hear what God has said. Let them hear. Now, the second word here is the Greek word akua. To hear, understand, and to do. To hear, understand and to do 
When you get the word of God, you need to understand it so I know what I need to do with it. Go to the next passage, 24. Consider carefully what you hear. God's not holding you responsible for what you put in your ear game. If you know it's proven, what you hear impacts you. You hear certain songs and start crying. They ain't coming back. They ain't coming back. Why don't you cry for them? You start thinking about things. Also. You hear certain music. There's no lie. You start hearing certain music, you start driving fast. That's true. I'm telling you. Or you be sitting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next thing, come on now. You know what I mean? So God said, what you put in you, I'm holding you responsible for. If you hang out with the wrong company and they keep talking stupid, and you keep allowing that to be deposited into you, God said, I'm holding you responsible for it. Right. Consider carefully what you hear, he continued. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you and even more. Go to 25. So the measure you put out, the hungry you are to get this information and implement it into your life, that's the reward you get, in, in, get out of it. Right. Don't tell me you want to be something and you don't know nothing about it. I'm telling you, man, I'm just going, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to, I'm going to design this shoe and I'm telling you I'm going to make a billion dollars. Okay, well, what shoe sells and what shoe don't? What, if you don't know this, that in certain areas, shoes will sell more based off the price than the comfort. And then in another area, another zip code, shoes sell more for the comfort and not the price. You understand that? Now, they are paying price. But you got to have the comfort. You go over there where these, these crazy people are, they can, it can hurt their feet. But if it costs enough, child, they be walking like, like they're walking on nails, but they red bottoms. So therefore, I get a right to just walk. No, 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 no. Listen. See, if you're not willing to study where you think you're going, you don't qualify for it. Don't tell me you're going to own a home, but you don't know what it takes to get there. Don't tell me what you're going to be in five years, but you don't you have to study what it takes to get there. Amen. See, what you put in will determine what you get out. Some people are wishing and are hoping, but they have no, uh, no knowledge. They don't have a book to help them get where they go. Right now, you tell me what your dream is, what your goal is for 2000 and, uh, 2022. Tell me what your dream is. Tell me what your goal is. Tell me what you're going to accomplish. Then let me look on your phone and tell me what you've been listening to for the past two days. Mm -hmm. Then show me the book you've been reading for the past two days yeah. or two weeks or since the year started. I'll tell you whether you're fooling yourself. Right. You are not going where you have no knowledge of. That's true. Right. Now, I'm not saying that to offend you. I'm saying this to sharpen you. Right. If I'm going there, I need to know the road that needs to be traveled. Just be, just be persistent. Persistence and ignorance will keep you from your goal. You got to know what you're working with. You got to know who you're working with. Most, you know, I have no respect for people that start a business and bash their family on Facebook because they ain't bought their socks. Right. <laughs> I have no respect for you. That's dumb. What's wrong with you? Right. You ain't got much of nothing. You, going, you got to hurt your family because they ain't bought your socks. Mm -hmm. Your best supporters is not your family. Oh, you, you, you see me struggling. Don't try to attach yourself to me when I get my come up and all that other right. dumb stuff they pull. Right. I sell socks, man. Right. I've never mistreated any of y'all for not using my truck service. Right. You ain't, some of y'all ain't got no need for it. Right. Right. Man, people don't care whether you need their product or not. I'm selling it. I want your money. You, and, you, and, you don't know what it means to run a business. Right. You have a target audience that you've got to go to. Not everybody that know you. You know, most of us, we got family, they're going to buy them ugly socks. But you can't hate people because they buy what they don't need. My wife and I, sometimes I'll tell her, I said, let's just go and just support some of our people. We'll go to the flea market and different things. And there's some people that just, I really got to stretch the body product. I really do. And what you selling, I don't need. I'm not in it. Now, now you have to understand something. You have to understand there are some things you can sell no matter what's going on in the world, people are going to buy. Right? There are some things people ain't buying when, when times are hard. So you can make the best jury in the world. But ain't nobody, there's people trying to get food. You out here talking about something. Why you need to buy my bracelet? Because I'm hungry. 
<laughs> I'm trying to find some rice on sale. You understand? All right. If you want to be a, a great entrepreneur, know your market. You ain't got to make nobody feel bad for not supporting your dumb self. You sitting up there with them, them stupid socks, talking about some of these socks, keep your feet warm. All socks don't keep your feet warm. They thick enough. Made with the right material. Where your audience at? I didn't know y'all was selling socks. <laughs> he got so quiet. I didn't know that. Let me get out of this. Uh, uh, um, um, who, whoever has will be given more. Whoever has will be given more. Now, these are people that Jesus gave the talents to, gave one five, one two, one, one talent. If you got something, now you can get more. <clears throat> whoever does not have, even what, even what they have will be taken away. So now simply, if you don't if you're not willing to take where you got and make a make that level of excellence there, what you got gonna be taken away. You think you're growing, and in all reality, you're gonna start losing because you refuse to take on the level you want and work that thing. Work that thing. Listen, Kirk Franklin proved you don't have to be a good singer to be a great uh, songwriter, uh, 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 entertainer, yeah. He's one of the greatest gospel entertainers that live. You ever heard him say? So, 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 let me tell you something. Stop trying to be something you know nothing about. Right. Everybody knows where Tyler, Tyler Perry is at. But nobody understood his struggle. Right. What he had to go through. It wasn't that you're just going to keep trying. You got to keep learning. Right. If you go through something today and don't learn from it, and then learn how to prevent it, you head it right back there. Because your old nature is autopilot. You go right back to what you're comfortable with. Yes, oh, God. Listen, I got to get through this. I got to get this. Go to Luke 12 and 48. So I got to have more than just a desire and hunger. I can't just work hard. I got to now be willing to learn. Most people don't like to read. Okay. But that don't stop you from learning. There is an audio cassette somewhere that's going to help you. Yes. Are you listening to it? Right. See, you, you go to bed entertaining yourself instead of going to bed building yourself. True. When I get sick, I play sermons that talk about healing. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I'm about to make a money move, I listen to sermons that talk about wisdom. Talk about how God wants to elevate me. Yes. I Listen. You got to learn how to feed yourself and build yourself up. Mm -hmm. Stop thinking you're going to grow because you want it. Amen. Luke 12 and 48. God will ask more of you before he give you more. Amen. On the level you want, he's going to ask more of you Amen. before he take you out. It doesn't matter whether it means something to people. You got to know what God told you. Because some of you will have a good outside image, but God needs to be able to talk to you about your heart. And about what, what's going on with you. And your attitude about people. Or toward people. When God go in your kitchen. He ain't looking at what everybody else see. That's right. He wants to see what's in the cup. Mm -hmm. now, about to, now don't get stupid. Alright. God told me to get rid of all these Mitch Mass dishes in my, in my kitchen. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not telling you to do this. Because right. God ain't told you all you're trying to do is act. Like, like like me, but you ain't committed like me. Right, right. Mm -hmm. God wants them to get all these different glasses up out of here. Get them out. Get them out. Get them out. Listen, I, I, I never did like clutter, but I never understood how much clutter I had mm -hmm. until God gave me a different vision. Right. God would tell you, no, 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 we can't have all this. If people sit down and eat, everybody got a different type of fork. I'm talking about me now. Don't I'm not talking about you. <laughs> now I don't eat. Now don't y'all talk stupid now. Right. All right, that's you and your house. I don't eat out of paper plates because I'm royalty. Wait. <laughs> you ain't coming here with no this is a thick one. This is a hefty plate. No, I don't eat out of that. No, you know what I mean. There's a cookout, different things going on like that. But on a norm, I'm eating out of a regular plate. That's right. That's just. Now, I'm not telling you to do this. I'm not telling you this is a doctrine. I'm not telling you to do this to be blessed. I'm telling you how God works on me. So, when you open up my cabinet, you're going to see some structure and some order.
Because it's not based off what people see. It's what it really is. Right. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? You got to get to the place that I'm going to have order, not for people to see, but for God to know. God need to know my heart. Let me read this passage. Then we're going to finish this up next week. But, but the one who doeth not know and doeth things deserving punishment. This, this translation, let's change it. You can give me King James or the, the, the New Living Translation. But the New International Version, I, I don't want to read this one. Whatever this is, I'll take it. But he who do not know yet committed things desiring of strife. Simply meaning... When you don't know no better and you do wrong, you will not be punished as if you knew. Once you know right from wrong, God say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you accountable accordingly. When somebody don't know, some of y'all poor because you don't know. Do you know what I know today? If I would have knew when I was 19, I'm telling you, my life would be totally different. Totally different. I bought my first house when I was 19. I bought my second house when I was 21. Brownstone in Bushwick, in Brooklyn, New York. Oh, I mean, I had this hunger to be something, but I had no knowledge. Nobody was there to teach me. Nobody was there to, to tell me how I need to move and how I need to <clears throat> learn tenants. Now, before I buy a house in, 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 into a certain county, I need to know how do you evict people, because that means more than what you own. No, I'm telling you, in some counties, it takes you six months to a year to get people out your house. Unless you know somebody. <laughs> no, so, so listen to me. There are things you know now that you didn't know before. Right. God said, I'm holding you responsible. Right. You can't keep spending your money like there is no tomorrow. And then talk about waiting for God to bless me. Mm -hmm. Come, I'm, about, I'm about to help you. I'm about to help you now. Don't, don't get offended. Let it help you. When you don't own your own home, you limit yourself what you spend on your clothes right. because it's a mindset. You rather look good for people than to have good. Right. Broke people don't have no business trying to buy a hundred dollar sneakers. Right. You should know better. Right. Stepping out there thinking you something you stop that foolishness. Right. You don't wear certain shirts. Now don't look at me and think, well, you know, you you trying to tell me to do something. You don't know nothing. You don't know nothing about who paid for what I got. Not only am I clearance man, other people pay for my clothes. Do you hear what I'm saying? There's a tenant somewhere that's going to buy my next pair of whatever I'm going to wear. I don't work hard to look good. I work hard to save. I save to invest. I invest so that I can wear what I want. You don't usually see my money on me. You see somebody else's money. From one of my investments, that's on me. You got to understand that concept. That's not, that's not to try to be little. Hear what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying. When I buy my wife something, she, she tell me thank you. But that's somebody else's money. I got money from somebody else's pocket. But listen to me. Don't try to be something you're not. Your turn going to come. You know how many people are not willing to take two steps back so they can take five forward? Stop eating lobster and shrimp and all that stupidness now. Come on now. I tell people all the time, I ask somebody inbox me, what's the difference when I say I go back to chicken legs like that? I go back to quarter legs so fast your head is spinning. I drop them chicken wings so fast. I know when it's time to leave them chicken wings alone. And somebody said they didn't know what that means. Look at the price of chicken wings. Look at the price of quarter legs. Yes, I ain't got no shame in my game. No, we ain't getting no chicken wings. Put them things back. Right. Now, I've been in the store with chicken wings for $3.49 a pound. Mm -hmm. And I've seen them at $1.99 a pound. Mm -hmm. I know what I ain't got. I don't care what I got to taste for. I got to taste for my lights being on. <laughs> <laughs> But he, but he who did not know yet committed things deserving of stripes shall be beaten with a few. Meaning you will not be punished because you didn't know. For everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required. I'm giving you information for you to make a move. I'm giving you information for you to grow. I'm giving you information for you to be something better and greater than where you was. 
Are you listening to me? To whom much, much has been committed of him, they, they will ask the more. Now, what did the last part mean? Pastors, leaders, people have a right. Anybody that's following you have a right to ask more of you. So when people say, well, pastors are human too. But we ask more of people that's leading us. I understand you human pastor, but you can't be drunk walking around the street, walking around, some woman in the car that ain't the first lady. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? When you want to be elevated, you got to know there's going to be more expected of you. God is expecting more of you. There are some people going to have a filthy closet till Jesus come. You can't. Some people, Trump going to be nasty and mean and dirty looking. Mean mean you can't put nothing in there. Tear it up. Right. <laughs> Tear it up. You go ahead and put your hat down back there if you want to. It'll come back with grease stains, crumbled up, and all that. God said, I'm going to elevate you, but I'm going to expect more of you. Yes. Father, thank you for your children that have come to this place to get more of you. Yes. I pray, God, that you elevate them and increase them, that they can be what you've called them to be. You, God, give us the mindset that we would not just live, but we would live to glorify you. That things in our homes, things that, how we're living, how we're treating people means more than what we drive and where we live. Have your way in us, oh God. We'll give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name.